Today, I'm going to try and figure out the names of these two people in this old New York photograph, which is believed to have been taken in Prospect Park. There's no writing anywhere on the glass plate frame. I purchased the picture as a set of two glass plate photographs on eBay. The other picture in the set shows what appears to be a child's bedroom, likely a young girl's room since there are several dolls visible in the photograph. And this is key. The seller told me that both photographs are from the same original estate. A street address was written on the side of the glass plate photograph that showed the child's bedroom, 112 Kingston Avenue, which is a real address in Brooklyn. This is a really significant piece of information. Without this, all I would have is a picture of a young girl's bedroom and a photograph of two people facing the opposite direction. I wouldn't really have a starting point. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to examine this address to find out more. And along the way, I made a few small yet stunning discoveries that I'll reveal at the end. But I know that much of this is about the journey as to how I got there, so let's begin. Based on all of my experience in dealing with old New York photographs, these two definitely feel like the late 19th century. The clothing on the woman and the girl, as well as the items in the child's bedroom, both make me think that perhaps, perhaps, they were taken no earlier than the 1870s, and likely no later than the 1890s. My initial guess upon seeing the photographs, but not yet doing any research, I thought maybe the 1880s. A search of newspaper archives for 112 Kingston Avenue in Brooklyn, the address that's written on the bedroom photograph, first led me to the early 1870s. In May of 1871, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle printed the following ad. For sale, a good city-made leather top wagon has been run one season, is in good order, will be sold cheap, as owner has no use for it. Also, a set of light single harnesses, nearly new, apply at any time at 112 Kingston Avenue near Dean Street. A few months later, in September 1871, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle printed another ad that said, For sale, a new and handsome piano. Cost $500. Will sell for $300. Also, parlor, dining room, bedroom, and library furniture. All black walnut and handsome. Will sell cheap, as owner is leaving the country. Call at any time at 112 Kingston Avenue, near Dean Street. And by call here in 1871, they didn't mean telephone because that hadn't yet been patented. When they said the word call, they meant to drop by in person. Two weeks later, also in September of 1871, this ad appeared. For sale or to let. House and seven lots. House is modern and has 12 rooms with all the modern improvements. It is situated in a splendid neighborhood, 45 minutes from Ferries by Atlantic or Fulton Avenues. Garden has some fruit. There's also a stable. Will sell all or part for loss than cost, or will rent for $800 per year. Owner is going away to remain, and must do something with this within a week. 112 Kingston Avenue, near Dean Street. Kingston Avenue is the first street above Brooklyn Avenue. Then around one year later, in October of 1872, the New York Herald published an ad that said the owner, presumably the new owner of 112 Kingston Avenue, was selling a small Cuban saddle pony. It said, for sale, pony, small Cuban saddle pony, Tony, very choice, 112 Kingston Avenue. None of these listings were very helpful in regard to the two photographs that we're looking at, but they did shed some light on what 112 Kingston Avenue must have been like back in the early 1870s. The owner had some land, 112 Kingston Avenue and seven lots. There was a stable and a garden, and this was presumably before the lots were filled with the houses that are there today. Right around the corner from 112 Kingston Avenue on Dean Street, just a half a block away, was what's known as the Elkins House. This house was abandoned for years and just recently was restored. It's possible that 112 Kingston Avenue looks something like this in the 1870s. Next, I turned to Ancestry.com, which hosts a variety of historical records, and I found answers. I'm now going to start moving quickly, so I recommend turning on captions down below, so you can take in all the data as I travel back in time to solve this mystery. A search of Ancestry.com for the address on this photograph, 112 Kingston Avenue, led to results for men named William V. Hansen and Charles Goldberg. Again, William V. Hansen and Charles Goldberg. Did they live at 112 Kingston Avenue? Let's find out. Let's first look at William V. Hansen. In a newspaper article from William V. Hansen's death in 1904, it names his daughter as Mrs. C.H. Goldberg, which refers to her husband's name, C.H. Goldberg. As I just said, I found on Ancestry.com that William V. Hansen and Charles Goldberg both lived at 112 Kingston Avenue. C.H. Goldberg is Charles Goldberg. 
A search for a marriage license showed that Charles H. Goldberg married Ella Hansen in 1878. This meant that Ella was William V. Hansen's daughter. It also meant that the woman in the photograph may very well have been Ella Goldberg after her last name was changed for the marriage. I'm going to attempt to confirm that with a little bit more data. William V. Hansen was listed in city directories at 112 Kingston Avenue between the 1870s and 1890s, meaning that he lived there or at least owned the property for quite a long time. For example, here's William V. Hansen in the 1876 city directory, spelled with an E in Hansen rather than an O. And here's William V. Hansen in the 1898 city directory, 22 years later and just six years before his death in 1904. As for Charles Goldberg, Hansen's son-in-law, he was also listed at the address from 1879 through 1884. This indicated that Charles Goldberg appeared to live with Ella's parents for the first few years of their marriage after they got married in 1878. So what about children? Who is the girl in the picture and whose bedroom appears in the other photograph? One unfortunate fact that I learned when doing research was that Ella Goldberg died nine days before her father, William. According to newspapers, she died after having an unspecified illness that lasted six months, and he died from what was only described as a lingering illness. At Ella Goldberg's death in 1904, a newspaper clipping said her daughters were named Edith and Estelle. In April 1888, Edith was mentioned in a newspaper as having attended a wedding with her parents, but Estelle was not named, indicating perhaps she was not yet born or was too young to attend. So it appeared that the two women in the picture may very well have been Ella Goldberg and her daughter, Edith. But let's find more data. An 1892 newspaper article said Edith Goldberg was a sixth grammar grade student. Edith Goldberg married William J. Berry, making her Edith G. Berry. After William J. Berry died in 1931, Edith appeared to marry again, this time to Frank Ruff. A picture on findagrave.com showed Edith Barry Ruff as having been born in 1881 and dying in 1965. This indicated that Edith was born in 1881, three years after her parents, Charles and Ella, were married. So when was Estelle Goldberg, Charles and Ella's other daughter, born? According to my research, Estelle Goldberg married F. Remsen Ryder. That made her Mrs. S. Remsen Ryder, Jr. A 1971 newspaper article said she was 83 when she died that year, making her birth year around 1888. This meant it looks like Estelle was seven years younger than her sister, Edith. So if this picture was taken in Prospect Park, and if the photograph truly does show Ella and Edith Goldberg, with Edith being born in 1881, based on the young girl's height and being in her teenage years, I would estimate that the picture was captured in the mid-1890s. As for the photograph of the room, it's unclear if it belonged to Edith or Estelle. Perhaps it belonged to both of them. An examination of the picture shows a doll, figurines, a moon on the wall, and an American flag parachute-shaped piece of cloth hanging on the mirror. There appear to be either family photos or perhaps some sort of other literature tucked into a floral pattern item on the wall. On the dresser can be seen several items, including a fan, dolls, art, glass containers, and other items. In the mirror, a shelf can be seen. Off to the left in the mirror's reflection, that might be a sink and faucet. Perhaps a candle on the wall, animal figurines, artwork, and a clock. The sun appears to be shining into the window which would indicate it's likely morning or afternoon and not the middle of the day. Here on the soft piece of furniture, which looked to be a daybed, there's a pillow and what looks to be a folded shirt or other item, perhaps made of cloth. The design of the rug is also visible down on the floor. Tucked into a frame on the right side of the photo was a small illustration of cats. Similarly, looking back into the reflection of the mirror, there's another picture tucked into a different frame which might also be an illustration of a cat. Finally, looking up to the ceiling, the change in pattern on the wall is also visible in the photograph. 
About halfway through completing the research for this project, I realized something that left me stunned. 112 Kingston Avenue. Now, I lived for a few years right around the corner. In fact, I was only a few doors down from what was then the abandoned Elkins House before its restoration. If we take a look at Google Street View, today, 112 Kingston Avenue is a laundromat. This was my laundromat for several years. I didn't realize this until halfway through making this project. I have spent a lot of time in this building, 112 Kingston Avenue, the building I've been talking about in this video, which kind of blew my mind. And on top of that, while trying to identify some of the items in the photograph of the child's bedroom, I started hunting for one of them on eBay. This one right here, the one with the cats. And here in my hands, the same artwork from the late 19th century. I was unable to retrieve any further information about these two photographs from the seller. All they knew was that these two pictures came from the same original estate. While there's always a possibility that these two glass plates are unrelated, and of course, I don't have the ability to travel back in time with a time machine to definitively confirm this, I would argue that there is a greater chance that the people in this picture are indeed linked to the other photograph that showed the writing about 112 Kingston Avenue. No matter the case, I was able to learn about people who perhaps haven't been discussed for decades. By digging into history and trying to go back in time and figure out a mystery, I believe this to be Ella Goldberg and her oldest daughter, Edith. There's one more thing that you may not have noticed yet about this photograph. As I zoom in, you can tell that there appear to be more people in this picture. Thank you for watching.